Hi there, it's Lee here. Welcome to iMind Blocks. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my Burst Coin hardware. So, the hardware behind me uh, is used primarily for mining Burst Coin. Um, in some of my previous videos, it's got a lot of uh, attention, a lot of guys are interested in it. So, quite a few of you have had uh, lots of different uh, questions. Um, and it's the same sort of questions that keep coming up, a bit of a recurring uh, theme. So what I thought I would do is create this video to explain um, a couple of the, the questions and answers um, that you've been asking. Okay, so the first question is, why do I use external drives rather than internal drives? So the reason being is the capacity that you get from an external drive is obviously the same as an internal drive but you're going to be getting that capacity at a much cheaper price so in the background you can see the black drives which are Toshiba 5 terabyte drives um, I purchased those for uh, 120 pounds each if I was to buy the internal version of that drive which has the same drive in it uh, that would cost 150 pounds so to get an internal drive you're paying a premium of roughly around about 15 to 20 percent over the price of an external drive now the actual external drives inside those, the casings, uh, the drive is exactly the same. So in the Toshiba there are 7200 RPM drives and they've got the same amount of cash. Maybe a slight slight difference in uh, performance but generally speaking uh, you get a much uh, better capacity for the price that you're paying. So external drives, the reason I'm using them is because they are cheaper for the, the price per terabyte. Okay, so continuing on, why use USB free drives rather than uh, uncasing them and making them internal drives? So, as I've already said, the external drives, you get them uh, the highest capacity at the lowest possible price versus internal drives. Uh, what you can actually do is you can actually uncase or decase the actual external drives. I've done that previously uh, on one of my old Seagates, so I actually took out the actual plastic casing, uh, fitted it into the actual uh, worker free machine, and it worked perfectly fine. Um, the only downside to doing that is that you have to kind of uh, reformat the actual drive uh, and partition it, um, and also you can uh, invalidate any warranty that was originally provided uh, with the actual drive itself. But coming back to the actual USB uh, points, if you're using USB drives and you've got them all connected to a hub, so long as you don't have hundreds of drives, if you've got what I've got here, it's probably just about bottlenecking the actual USB system at the moment, um, and I've got a couple of different workarounds for that. But really, using USB drives, it's easy to expand upon the actual um, capacity that, that you've already got quite easily just by plugging it in. You don't have to go through any extra work, and the performance is going to be uh, just as good uh, as well. Okay, so one other point that people will uh, bring up quite often is uh, do the external drives use any more power than internal drives? And they probably use a slight amount more power, but not very much. Um, normally hard drives they use between sort of 5 and 10 watts, even the 7200 um, RPM drives. The hard drives are very power efficient, so by using external drives, each one has got its own power adapter, so it will use slightly more power versus an internal setup. Um, but the actual power consumption is so low that it's really not going to make any difference. I mean, even if it used 10% more power, that's only going to be like a one watt increase uh, for each drive. So it's really not significant. So using external hard drives will use slightly more power, but it's not, it's not really going to make very much difference in the real world. Okay, so a really common question regarding burst coin plots is why do I not use a uh, RAID? So RAID essentially helps out with two different things. Uh, one is performance and the second is redundancy. So I'll start with redundancy first. Burst coin plots, uh, they're very easy to sort of write. They do take a long time, but they're very straightforward to write. So you write your plot. If I was to lose a hard drive or the data was to become uh, corrupt, it's very easy for me to just recreate that plot um, and just start again. So there's no real loss. There's not uh, a great need for uh, redundancy when it comes to uh, burst coin. So that really issue answers that particular issue when it comes to uh, RAID. The other part is the performance. The extra performance that uh, RAID could provide uh, would be ideal for Burst, but the problem is that RAID gets that performance by sacrificing your capacity. So you'd be able to read your plot, say, twice as fast, for example, but you'd have half as much capacity. So if I had a, uh, two drives with two 8 terabyte plots, it gives me 16 in total. If I was to use RAID, um, I'd be half in that and I'd only get in 8 terabytes. Of plots 
Um, twice the performance but half the capacity which effectively means half the earnings. So that's why I don't use uh, RAID. Okay, so another common question is can you use uh, USB sticks, memory cards um, and that kind of thing for Burst Coin? And you can. Uh, I've actually done a video which I used a 128 gig uh, micro SD memory card, uh, used it for Burst Coin plots. Um, it wasn't very successful. Uh, essentially they, they don't uh, plot very well, they're not uh, read fast enough and the capacities are too small so you can use them um, but really they're not going to produce a great amount of uh, rewards for you. Okay so another question that's commonly asked is why do I not use SSDs uh, rather than traditional hard drives or in the case of external hard drives why not use SSDs? Um, SSDs uh, would provide great performance when it comes to um, writing the plots and also reading your burst coin plots well, which would be uh, great. The problem is with SSDs, the capacities are relatively small in comparison to tr traditional hard drives, um, but also more than that is the actual price uh, for per terabyte of actual capacity is really expensive. So on a traditional uh, hard drive, internal or external, you'll pay between uh, 25 to 30 pounds per terabyte of storage. Um, if you take that to an SSD, you're probably looking at about three to four times as much money. So, and as with Burst, you're only getting paid for the capacity that you actually have. So there's no point really having a one terabyte SSD uh, in comparison to say a five terabyte uh, regular hard drive. So SSDs are good for performance, but they're not really good for uh, earnings. Okay, so an extra question that I'm asked uh, quite a lot is, which is the best brand for Burst Coin hard drives, uh, in my opinion? So I've tested Seagate's, Toshiba's and Lacey drives and in my experience the best drives are between the Toshiba's and these new Lacey drives which are the most recent purchases. Um, the Seagate's I've had in the past um, are absolutely fine but they are slightly slower performance. Uh, one other factor to consider is also the price that you're paying per terabyte. Generally what I would say is buy the cheapest capacity uh, sorry, buy the, buy the capacity that's the cheapest, that's what I'm trying to say. So it really doesn't matter too much performance wise, it's better to go for capacity rather than performance. However, having said that, if the actual price is the same um, across each of the drives, then you want to be sort of uh, considering the extra performance benefits from them. So the Toshiba drives at the back and also the Lacey's um, at the front are 7200 um, RPM drives so they get slightly better performance than the Seagate drives. Um, all of the Seagate drives that I have uh, used or experienced or know of have either 5200 RPM drives or, or 5400 RPM drives so you're going to get slightly less performance um, on those drives. Um, you'll just see in my plot optimization video where I compare the Toshiba versus the Seagate and the Seagate come out much much better uh, in terms of read and write performance uh, in comparison to the Seagates. So which ones do I think best? I think the best ones are the cheapest ones. Second to that, the best, cheapest and fastest ones, which tends to be either Toshiba if you can find them, or if not, the uh, Laces more recently, which were, were on offer. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this information useful and you have a bit of better understanding of what to buy or why to buy it when it comes to burst coin mining. And uh, I'll leave it there for this video. If you did like it, be sure to give it a like or perhaps leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on where you think it could be improved or if you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to leave those in the comments area below. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. I upload this kind of content on a regular basis and it'll be great to have you as part of our community here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Where are you going?